Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new Screensavers is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Your metal license plate goes digital, Patrick's headphone picks, and the new top features in Android P. Live from Twit. It's the new Screensavers. <laughs> Call her one take Ellie from. She was on it. She was so good. I like what you've done with the face. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Not new her, Ellie you. from Virginia. Ellie's nice fantastic. To see you. She's got a future. I tell you, so good. Welcome to the Screensavers. That's Patrick Norton. Hi. And I'm the Monopoly Man, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I just, I felt a little left out with that mass, massively. You can stop shaving, and in several years, you'll have <laughs> several patches of your face. It'll take me years fur. to get even close to the lumberjack that. You should have seen it before I trimmed it back. <laughs> it was exciting. You're very hip, though. That's the beards are very popular these days. I've never been called so, hip before. I thought I just, since you're, 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 you also have a mustache on your laptop, I just thought I'd. My six year old put that there. I'm afraid to remove it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> he, he, he's tough, I know. Patrick is my old buddy from the Screensavers. You it's know, true. Patrick, I want to tell you something really scary. That was. Coming May 11th. That will have been. 20 years since Tech TV started. You were there at the beginning, but you were on the new Screensavers. It took you a little while to get on the new Screensavers. We got to get rid of no, that. No, no, that, that was the old Screensavers. Yeah, I mean, the old Screensavers. The original. Yeah. You could say. Do you remember the first time I did that segment? You were so we scared. I was physically he was, shaking. He was physically shaking. It was so cute. Turns out 1,200 hours in television, <laughs> you get more comfortable after You do. Is that how much you did? I think you That's and I, nice. you, between you and Kevin and me. 1,200 hours. I, or between you and Kevin and, and Martin. Yeah, I think it was ended up being 12 or 1,300 hours. That's Matthew. He's visiting us also. Matthew, next time you can read the open. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Matthew's like, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm going to put my mustache over my camera. That's what you want to do these days. Speaking Look at that. Hip. The new Lenovo uh, Yoga has a nice shutter on the camera. You told me for years, Patrick, you were really right. You told me for years, don't be doing that Facebook thing. Facebook keeps everything they know about you, and they're trying to make you behave like a crack addict on Saturday night. And they it want worked. you to keep checking. It worked. And people laughed at me. No, yep, you were right. right. <laughs> Coming up on today's show, well, this is actually really right. cool, but you also told me not to get this. But I want it badly. You know, the, the it, those stamped metal license plates you're driving around, those are so last century. If the folks at Reviver Auto have their way, CEO Neville ben, uh, Boston is here. He's going to show us the new digital plate, the R-Plate Pro. I have one question. Can I do a one-button message on that license plate to tell the guy that was tailgating me on Get the off of my ass! That wasn't what I was thinking, but that's the expression. <laughs> Mine was shorter. <laughs> Communicating. Yeah, you were at oh, Can man. Jam. What is that? Can Jam. So Can Jam is a series of the head-fi.org, amazing headphone oh, website. Oh, I love head -fi. So yeah. Can Jam, they do regional gatherings. They do Singapore, London, Denver, Los Angeles, New York City. There's a couple, three others. You go and listen to all the cool headphones. We'll talk about some of the amazing headphones I got to experience. Patrick's always been my headphone guru, so I'm waiting to... I, I've been saving up my pennies to find out what you like, what I, I should covered. get. Coming up, a call for help. We're going to talk about RAID mm -hmm. and Thunderbolt 2 and USB 3, and thank God you're here. And RAID versus SSD. That's a whole other crazy conversation. We got Megan Maroney, roundup of her favorite Samson mics. Those are inexpensive USB mics. I, yeah. those, those have been around for years. Jason Howell show us his new, uh, favorite new features in Android P. P. Oreo. They're always desserts, right? P. Nougat. Or someday it'll be updated. Persimmon pudding. Persimmon pudding. 
I like that. No? <laughs> Plums. Popsicle. Plums. Plums. Popsicle, probably. <laughs> and we got more questions for you in the mailbag. It's all coming up, but first, our hot topics. We're not, you know what? I'm so sick of talking about Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook testimony. I'm not going to say anything. I, you know, I just want to give a shout out. Anybody who could be called to task is probably the best congressional performance. Um, oh my goodness, I can't think of his name. Howard Hughes, the aviator. Yeah. Except Howard Hughes was engaging and entertaining and ripped the lungs out of Congress. And Mark Zuckerberg just walked in, avoided answering questions for several hours, and walked back out $3 billion richer. How many times did he say, I'll have my team get back to you on this? Something like 30, 40 times. It's the new, I do not recall. I do not recall. I, I do have, not recall. And, and what I really wonder is, Will his team get back to them? <laughs> I mean, oh, his seriously. team already had all the answers. My team will get back to you. Are, is, are the members of Congress going to get an email saying, regarding your questions, one, yes, two, not, not really, three, sort of, four, I'm like that, or what? I mean, are they, well, anyway, who cares? Mr. Zuckerberg, I said I'm I in California, I have a question from my daughter. She would like to understand exactly why you replaced <laughs> the poke with several different, incredibly indescribable gestures, including a waving hand. <laughs> It's flirting for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, somebody once said watching my wife and I date was like watching Porcupine's Mate. Oh my God, I bet it was It too. probably was. How's Sarah these days? She's good. Good, I love her. She's a librarian, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And that is a, mo by the way, you think I know Marion the librarian, the glasses, the pony. No, no, no. Modern expert in digital stuff. <laughs> she has a degree. Tech expert. Tech expert. Both of us. Digital so, stuff. Apple put a memo out to all of its employees saying, this is awesome. please don't leak. We Last year, we discovered 29 leakers. 12 of them were arrested. How do we know? Well, the memo was immediately leaked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Tim Cook plans to double down on secrecy. He like, said that. I, I, I think... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk anything about like the Tim Cook, Steve Jobs things, but I think everybody was delete expletive terrified Tim of is Steve too nice. Jobs. Tim is too yeah. sweet. He might, but what, that's why Apple said you could get arrested. Although, what would you be arrested for? Well, if you read the rest of the post, I guess in some cases, at least the 12 cases where people got arrested, it had to do with network penetration. They were using anti-hacking laws to go after right. these guys, which is kind of not cool, Apple. Not cool. Apple's not exactly been known for being gracious in their interpretation of legal statutes and how they might use that to beat somebody to death that they were irritated with. In some legally cases, and financially. leakers at Apple face jail time and massive fines for network intrusion and theft of trade secrets, both classified as federal felonies. Come on, Apple! What are we're you going to do to the guy about... who leaked this memo? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It's fine. It, 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 they say, and this is true, that people right. at Apple work really hard. It takes some of the fun out of it if people know ahead of time what you're going to announce. You can, I mean, it's also the simple practice of industrial espionage. As, industrial That's espionage reasonable. costs That's a problem. billions of losses. That's annually. a reasonable problem. I understand. Theft of intellectual property. Yeah. That, no, that I get. And, and that I don't mind if they prosecute. But it's our job as journalists. Mm -hmm. And Apple said, oh, I love this, I love this line too. Apple said, you know, when a journalist reaches out to you to, to get to know you and to, and to find out more about what you're up to. They have a motive. They, <laughs> it's important to remember, said Apple, that you're getting played. So when Apple reaches out to you, they mm -hmm. don't reach out to me anymore. They haven't talked to me since <laughs> I have not I have not gotten a single phone call from Apple since Apple, on the screensavers when I said Windows 98 was just as easy to use as OS 10. But Apple I got cut. Says to bloggers, come on over. We'd like to show you what we're up to. You're not being played. You're not being played. <laughs> I can I can understand why they might be concerned that some people don't understand maybe that there are ulterior motives, but I think while it may seem flattering to be approached, we it's know important you're... to remember the press is out to get you. 
All right. Anyway, enough to say. Uh, have to enough, lower enough. the shareholder <laughs> value. Well, that's 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 reasonable. Maybe it does. I don't know. I think it enhances shareholder value. And we know Apple uses leaks strategically. No. To the Wall Street Journal and others. You're kidding me. Yes, they do. Wait, when we see seven stories about a product mm -hmm. everybody's waiting for that magically mm -hmm. appear in four of their friendliest mm -hmm. publications that mm -hmm. routinely give them puff pieces mm -hmm. that passes reviews. This is even before they hand feed their select three or four pre-release reviewers who get the all of the traffic because they're so good about understanding the core message of the Apple product. Not that they're being played, mind you. You know what, Patrick? You and I are never going to hear from Apple again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard from Apple in 20 years. No more invites for I'm you, sure, my friend. I was sure I was just to the front of the Rolodex again, and now I'm oh, to the back Oh, finally, we could talk to... No, nope, not going to talk to them. Damn so, it. I love this. You picked this out. Tesla... Is Elon Musk talking right. about why the Model 3, it's a little slow to come out, although we, I have a friend who just got his Model 3. It's a beautiful car. Well, their, their goal was 2,500 units a week. They're closing it on 2,000. That's There's, pretty close. We're not even going to talk about the whole April Fool's, you know, Tesla tequila drunken, whoops, I just lost my shareholders a giant chunk of money. Tweet, Fura. I missed that one. Oh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Oh, you mean when Elon wrote... Were bankrupt yeah. on a piece of cardboard yeah. and had drool. That was weird. Every did time that boost stock market share? Yeah, that, 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 that did not boost stock market share. And I got to say, I am a huge Elon Musk fan. Um, Why do you spell bankrupt with a W? Because he has a sense of humor. Oh, okay. But, uh, I mean, every, I've, as somebody who's watched, like, every SpaceX launch, like, 300 times on YouTube, I love the man, but... Um, he's basically saying, and this is the guy who's been warning us about AI is the scariest thing on the planet. He says robots are terrifying. There are apparently too many robots in the factory in Fremont, and their attempt to roboticize everything and failed. The, it failed. Yeah. Well, I was I was going to say something else. But Production it's a hell is for the... a family friendly. Yeah. Apparently, there were like conveyor belts and mayhem, and their attempt to to eliminate people and use robots for everything created problems. I actually had a great tour of the. There, these are the robots. They some of these are from France, some right. from Germany. These robots are massive, and they actually have. They I was I I was blown away. There are two giant robot arms in the Tesla plant that do only one thing. When the car is almost completely assembled, and mm -hmm. so it's pretty heavy, the two arms come in on either side and lift it and put it on the next one, mm -hmm. the next belt. It's That's an it. elevator. Yeah, it's an elevator. It's but a instead robot of using like a lift, they actually elevator. have a robot. I think they rotate it too. Okay. So they pick it up, they turn it over. <laughs> it's pretty cool though, but I could see why this may be a, a little too high tech. <laughs> Two th I'm, I, you know, there it is. There they are. They have. It's actually a two-layer conveyor belt. They that just sounds enormously impressive. painful. Well, they have to get. I think they have to get under it sometimes. They have to get over hey, it. You see, in the old factories, they would just sort of raise the car up. Yeah. And the people would do the things under yeah. it. Yeah. Then they'd Maybe lower the car down, down. Yeah. on the existing thing without using four million dollars of robots to flip the car you know, like a hamburger patty. It was actually cool. We, uh, I don't know, about eight or nine years yeah. ago. Uh, we got to go to uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and to the amazing Rouge River plant Ford mm -hmm. built years ago, where they make F-150 trucks. Right. And I don't know how we got down, but we were able to get down onto and actually stand on the line. The line, nowadays, the workers move on the conveyor belts, big wide conveyor belt, yeah. they're on it. They practically have armchairs on the thing. It's very comfy. And they're moving along. It is, this is, our, yeah, this is it. It was an amazing experience. And I have to say, it really... These guys know how to bend metal, as they say. Yes. They really know how to do it. It was very impressive. And the workers were great. It did, they, weren't, they didn't feel like they were pressured, but they, they felt like they were enjoying their job. There they are. This is the F-150 line. It's pretty... That's a, that's a big turnaround, because if you've ever read Rivet Head when they first started oh, really I know. speeding up and automating... Oh, it was lines. inhumanizing, yeah. right? Yeah. So perhaps they've, they've swung back in the they've other direction. They've learned, yeah. Elon, if you want to hire more people in the Bay Area, I'm down with it. More humans. Less automation. He's worked in, a, in, a, in an auto plant. Actually, before. oddly enough, it's the one horrible job I haven't had. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Google has lost the right to be forgotten. <gasps> <laughs> no, no, that's I, miss, I misspoke. They've lost the right to be forgotten case. Oh. Actually, there were two cases. They were fighting. This is a UK high court action. A man who has not been named due to reporting restrictions, because he wants to be forgotten, uh, <laughs> wanted results about a past crime he actually had committed and was convicted for, removed from the search engine. And the justice uh, 
Mark Warby ruled in his favor on Friday. However, Justice Warby rejected another claim made by another businessman who had committed a more serious crime. That seems arbitrary. The judge said, the other guy wasn't contrite. <laughs> So this is the problem I have with the whole right to be got, forgotten thing. They expect, by the way, normally this is not done in court. This is right. done by Google. They decide whether or not, and then sometimes people say, no, 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 you really need to forget me and I'm taken to court. Uh, Google's already removed 800,000 pages from its search results. Wow. That, by the way, this is instead of removing the actual story, they just remove the search results, right? Right. Instead of going to the newspapers and saying, can you take that down? They say, Google, can you not list it? Which, to me, is the wrong, you're going to the wrong person. Well, no, 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 this is great, though, because it, it just means you need to search Google and DuckDuckGo. There you go. And I guess Bing, technically, is still a search engine. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you just, eventually, you'll find the information that they want to remain secret unless they sue every single search engine on the planet. Uh, it's just, uh, it's it just, I think, a, a fundamental mis- Look, I like GDPR, by the way. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that GDPR, the European general potato, right. potato <laughs> <laughs> the general potato data regulations is very important. It's not potato, it's protection. I'm with you. You say potato, I say projection. No, no, uh, you said potato. <laughs> you, I, I kept say my potato, mouth shut. You say <laughs> <laughs> the general data protection regulation is, in general, a good thing. For instance, because of it, we have the right to download our Facebook data for the first time ever, or we will. We have the right to have that data deleted for the first time ever, or yeah. maybe. And uh, so I think that's a good thing. It's forcing American companies, in order to comply with right. the European regulations, to do the right thing. To do all the privacy stuff they should have done should from, from the, the first beginning. Place. But the right to be forgotten is a little bit more challenging, because it's basically making Google be responsible for deciding something that... Well, Google is responsible for their listings. But they're not responsible for the original article. They're merely responsible for saying, having a search result. Well, if they just, if they weren't the number one way of researching on the I internet, guess. maybe they wouldn't be in this problem. So if you sucked more Google, you wouldn't have as many problems. <laughs> if you were like, say like Bing. Right. Yeah. Bing? Well, I'm just glad for the General Data Potato Act. <laughs> Thank you, Europe, for your potatoes. All right. And your privacy protection you are a little skeptical and I understand why but this is gonna be my next license plate we're gonna talk about a digital license plate that is legal in California is this a smart license plate it's smart smarter than me anyway oh my goodness yeah smart license plate coming up in just we're gonna learn about that in just a second are you gonna tell us about rocket Mortgage? right now I want to tell you about our fine sponsor if you are buying a home if you are owning a home and you want to refinance, you got to know about Rocket Mortgage. This is from Quicken Loans, number one lender in the country. Uh, number one, by the way, according to J.D. Power, in customer satisfaction year after year after year, but also number one in volume. And that's only recently. The big bank that used to be the leader has now fallen, and I think that has a lot to do with Rocket Mortgage. Quicken Loans realized that the mortgage approval process was kind of stuck in the 18th century. They decided to make it a completely online process. Last time we bought a house took uh, almost two months. And, and the, the seller was coming back to us saying, Are you, what's the deal? I'll sell it to somebody else. We had to fax more and more material. Not anymore. With Rocket Mortgage, you just go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Answer a couple of simple questions. Because Quicken Loans is the big lender, right? They have trusted relationships with all the financial institutions. Once you give them permission, they can get everything they need. Crunch the numbers based on your income, your assets, uh, and your credit. They will look at all the loans for which you qualify. You get to choose the term, the rate, the down payment, and you're done. And all of this it didn't take two months, didn't take two weeks, didn't take two days. It took 10 minutes, 10 minutes in most cases, to get a home loan or a refi from Rocket Mortgage. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. If you're going to refi or you're going to borrow, you got to do this. In fact, set up your account right now. It'll take less than 10 minutes. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. It's rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently with Rocket Mortgage. We thank them so much for their support. I am excited about this. You are holding... A license plate. Just before the show today, Mr. Leo Laporte sent me into the driver's lot, well, actually in the parking lot with a screwdriver and said, bring me back the cleanest <laughs> license plate you can find. 
And whoever that is that is going to be that. really pissed when I'm they see this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joining us right now, the CEO and founder of Reviver Auto. That is being replaced by this. Neville, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on to the new screensaver. Thank you for having me. So when, Thank you. Patrick, Neville, when did you uh, get the idea for this? 2008. What? Yes. Let's take a while. It takes a minute. <laughs> you know, you know, you uh, work well, with... You've got to get regulatory approval, first yes, of all, right? that was the first thing. I yeah. seem to remember something about 2008 that made starting a new business complicated. What was that? Mm. Oh, yeah. The collapse of the U.S. economy. <laughs> I remember that. I hate that. So, I mean, this is I mean, this little, this is an e-ink display. Yes. Beautiful display. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. Is it? Can I call this a smart license plate? You can. How you can. smart? What does it do? Well, the, the first thing that we wanted to do was just simplify registration. Okay. That was the, that was the big issue, because that's a pain point, uh, both for consumers and for businesses. So, oh. I, I got to say it, because yep. I'm that guy. This is going to get out of the car at the DMV, wait in line, and deal with the guys <laughs> in the DMV. And I, nice. I got to say, California DMV is so nice compared to the DMVs I've worked with in other states, um, which the California residents are all looking at their screen in horror right now. But <laughs> the, uh, how does this handle your registration? So we have a portal that you can go to either by um, on your phone on an app or at your computer. Mm -hmm. And you basically register your vehicle through our portal. You don't have to go to the DMV anymore. What? Yes. So this must have been a long process getting the state of California to go along with you. I've got to I've got to say <laughs> yeah, it took a while because of the process, but what was exciting about it is that it was a a real public private partnership. And they got it. This is going to help them and it's going to make the public a lot Absolutely. Better. And it was just a process. Okay. I worked with DMV, I worked with CHP, I worked with the D uh, Department of Transportation and law enforcement and we worked together collaboratively. That's a good point. California Highway Patrol yep. is going to has to absolutely agree that this is this is going to work. Couldn't I just change my license number when I rob a bank? <laughs> no. No, oh, no, no. Okay. You don't have access to that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is automatically programmed to show the proper license. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You check the VIN number, make sure that it's right, and then you get the actual uh, license plate number downloaded. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's your uh, Tesla, your uh, beautiful Model S. I like that color, by the way. And that's the plate on the back of it. That is. It actually is uh, Mr. Prashant, you know, my oh. VP of... He gets the fancy car. Huh? Yes, he does. He does. Now, let me ask you, uh, does this light up? And Wait a minute. Calling server? Yes. Why is it... What's it doing? Uh, it's it's going to change. <gasps> wow, change the background. That. You got yeah. the new sticker and you got the California background. And it updated. Oh, that is... So I don't have to worry about that anymore. I no, like that. No, no, no. For fleets, it's it's amazing. You don't have to put stickers on thousands of vehicles. This is your primary business right now. Is for this the is fleet my market. business. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's, 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 it's both. It's both a fleet and it's consumer. Because we're actually in about four different, six different dealerships right now. There's one in San Francisco I saw. I can go down. So, so do I have are, to buy a car from that dealership to get this plate? No, no, no. They'll put them on regardless. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. so on our website, you're able to, to uh, put in your address and we'll direct you to the dealership that you can get a plate from. What does CHP think? I mean, the California Highway Patrol, they're, they're you know, they're, they're kind of serious people. You know, what was nice is that we talked to them before we built anything. So it's like a partnership. Mm -hmm. So we worked with them. We go to their test track and test it out whenever we have a new version. So it's, it's different. It's different than creating something in a bubble and then right. telling somebody that you have to use it. We actually worked with them. Right. Novel idea. Yeah. And, I was going to say, like, and, yeah. just the talking to the customer before you build the product is not the way it's done in Silicon Valley. Yeah, so we, we did it a little bit differently, you know, because we had some regulation that we had to go through, but it was the right way to do it. So are you guys going to be like making money by running advertising on, on consumers' plates with this? Or is this no. something where... Well, no, well, you, oh, come on. No, no, no. It's, it's a great question. Don't no. cook tonight, call chicken the light. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that belongs on my list. Yeah, no, no, no. What, what, what we're looking at is, is basically, you know, three things. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to do over-air registration. Uh, for businesses, you can tell where your vehicle is because there's telematics uh, nice. inside the plate. So that's got location features. Location features, you can geofence, all of that. Right. And, then, and then the third thing is, is that you can do targeted messaging when the vehicle is parked. But it's more like a business. If you think about your car being wrapped, now you can actually geofence the area and put messaging that actually means something to the consumer. What happens when the meter maid comes and sees an ad instead of a license there plate? There is, the license plate will always be available in the upper right-hand corner of the plate. Can I see what an ad might look like? Uh, it, it, this is gonna cycle through about um, 
10 different uh, see I, I could see for a fleet especially yes. having having some uh, advertising copy there when you're parked you can't Jedi, I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and it lights life. up. Yes. So that, at night, that's nice, too, because absolutely. C CHP can see that it's, better. It's illuminated, actually. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then you can actually change the background of the plate as well, and you'll be able to see that as well. California is uh, one of, I think a lot of states now are doing this, but they were one of the first to have all sorts of beautiful uh, backgrounds. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're really smart about what they've done. And, this is not color, though. It's black and white only. No, it's black and white only. And it's because it's bi-stable, and it takes no power for that image oh, to be there. That's so the that was eek. the reason why. You could, you could do LCD, but you need a tremendous amount of power. So if this loses power, doesn't have any power, you just unplug unplugged it. it. I just unplugged it. Just, it. It's never, it's, it never goes away. Yeah, it's yeah. always there. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's the reason why we went with that yeah. technology. But look how pretty that looks. Yeah, so that's the reverse. That's the black with the white lettering, um, which I think is going to be extremely popular. Um, it if just, you didn't know, you would, you, unless you got close, you wouldn't think You would not be able to, until it did something, and that's the nice thing about the plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you'd think you were hallucinating. <laughs> so that's... Potentially, yeah. potentially, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned there's, there's smart home connectivity options you're working on here, too. Yes. Give me an example. Well, I mean, if you were, if you could geofence sure. where, your, where your vehicle is, mm -hmm. you know, so you make sure that it's not leaving at night, but you could actually connect to your, um, when you come in, mm -hmm. it'll know that the vehicle's there. And if it leaves that area, then you would be able to be notified. Okay. That's more for fleet, although could individuals have that kind of feature? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Um, so... Uh, are you cycling? We're going to get some ads eventually. I yeah, like yeah, this yeah. black. This reverse is very... The reverse legible. is really nice, and it stands out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really so cool. So California right now, what other states? So California, uh, Arizona, we have plates on the road right now, passed legislation in Texas and Florida. We'll be in another nine states uh, before the end of the year. So, wow. 13 I've, before the end I of the year. Once California adopts it, I think it's a little easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, I mean, is it, it's pretty much, is it, is it rental car agencies or other fleets that are adopting Well, you, you, okay, so initially it's, it's um, dealerships. Mm -hmm. So you'll have like Galpin Motors sure. or Cooney. Uh, you have these as fleet and uh, parts, and then you also have it for F&I, for finance and insurance. Okay. So once again, if there's no power... It's going to look just like that. It's exactly. Not, and uh, now the, it won't light up, but your car might have, I mean... Lights on the back, yeah. normally, yeah. yeah. And it's reflective. Right. So, you right. know, if light so hits it, it reflects back. Oh, look at... I could do that? Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm a bear, so, I mean, so... Cal the, alumni. Cal alumni. Oh, nice. And, yeah, so there's the license there. That's always going to be Upper right-hand corner, okay. always there, always okay. visible. So is it a flat fee? You buy the license once. Is there a monthly fee? How yeah, so it's um, so you buy the license plate, so you buy the hardware, mm -hmm. and then there's a monthly fee. If you want telematics... Whoa! Stolen? Yes. How does it know? Well, um, if you if it's detached from the vehicle, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> you should like it too. You were talking about issues in, yeah, in various neighborhoods, it. so yeah. So basically, if if it's detached from the back plate, it lets you know that it's detached. Got it. And then we'll send you a message to oh, see if you that. did it or somebody else did it. Look at that. Amber Alerts, yeah. So what's the monthly fee? What do you anticipate it'll be? So the monthly fee, if you have telematics, is uh, about seven seventy five, mm -hmm. and without it, it's about five seventy five. Okay. Yeah. So in, inexpensive. How much is the plate itself going to be? Six ninety nine. Six hundred ninety nine dollars. Yes. Okay. I would still do it. <laughs> uh, I, oh, look at that! Toll paid. Yeah. How have, do you anticipate that being used? So RFID. Uh, yeah. So in two thousand nineteen, all toll roads are going to go to an RFID chip. We have one that's embedded in the plate. So if you go through a toll road, you don't need fast track anymore. It's embedded inside the license plate. <laughs> and, and, and for says parking, that, and for when parking, they take a picture. Yeah. They they will know. Parking validation. So you'll know parking. I love tolling. That. It's all one platform. I could. I think you've got a handle on the future. I mean, I can really see that this, at some point, becomes kind of required, right, for things like this. Now, your other, your other question breath. was appropriate. Oh. What happens if somebody parks by touch into the back of it? Well, I, okay, so the, I, I have a lot of neighbors that can't park. Oh, look, yes. you can get Leo on it. Wait, yeah, you can have now, Leo's face. You like, now, oh. how much would you pay? That's a lovely level of resolution from that screen. It, it, it is, it, it is, really it's good. beautiful. I mean, if, somebody, if somebody manages to, you know, if the, if, if How this robust is, is it? Yeah. Okay, so um, what we've done is that we've had it tested. It's IP66 rated. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, grill gas in the that front. That means water, waterproof. Waterproof, wind egress, all the rest of that. Um, what we did early on is that we had uh, some of the folks from GoPro uh, that have helped us kind of build out the technology. Okay. So it's extremely robust. So um, as far as um, the screen, 
uh, if it's cracked in any way, it's just like a um, like your windshield, mm -hmm. but you can still read the numbers. So okay. it's and it's kind of hard to get off. And it's it looks uh, like. negative yeah. forty to eighty five C. So up to about 180 degrees. We've had it in, um, in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, look at that. So it lets you know that it's detached. So there's a wire coming off of that. That is to a battery. What is that called? No, no, to? no. So it's it's plugged into 12 volt power, Compton power, okay. within the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. But even if it lost that, the, it would still because have. Because it's e yeah, it it's e just like yeah. your just like your. Camera and we have a battery that's inside as well. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and it can have specialty plates. You could have nonprofits. You could have handicapped plates on yes. this. Uh -huh. uh, medical conditions, student driver. That would be nice. <laughs> I'm just going to leave mine saying, student driver, please don't blame me. I, this is a senior driver. Can I have senior driver and student driver? Well, that we, we really... actually can put silver alerts on here, which is Sil actually a big deal. Hey, What's people get lost. alert. There's an old man at the wheel. Watch out. <laughs> um, this is, this, I think this is, this feels like the next big thing in, in a lot of respects. Uh, our plate, what's the website for this? It's uh, www.rplate.com. Also in Dubai? Yes, we just uh, signed, well, last month, we signed a POC proof of concept with Dubai. Nice. I immediately, so when, when started, I found out about this, somebody told me in the chat room, I think I immediately filled out the request for this. So I would then go, once I get approved or whatever, I go down to the dealership. Do I have to get approved? No. I just go to the dealership. Just go to the dealership. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be down in, uh, in a couple of days. So here's Fantastic. the, in the, in the light of our Facebook conversation, can people track you based on this? Listen, Other than the person who owns the plate? No. Okay. You, you keep and own all that information. Uh, one of the things that they're doing in Europe right now mm -hmm. is GDPR. Uh, it's about the potato regulation. The potato regulation. No, 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 no. no. Really it's, good. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no. We were <laughs> joking. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but it's, it, but it, it makes complete sense. And, and we're working to make sure that we're compliant to those standards. So we want to make sure that people good. own their data. Good. It's really important to us. Good. Yeah, awesome. actually, right, so because that's not your business. You're not selling people's data. Well, it's it's that's interesting. Not the business you're Tim in. Cook did a, a, I think, a great job of explaining like we build products that people want right. to buy. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I'm I'm not about you know trying to steal your data. So I want to build a product that you want to have, and you come to that product for that. And reason. if I get a new car, I can. I don't have to get a new plate. I can just take this with me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I do all the registration through your website. Absolutely. I really like that. So if I go down to the dealer now and I get this thing. He would just, I would just go on the website and say, this is my license plate, put this on my... As they're doing the registration, because they they'll do, do it. it, they'll do it, and it will be updated, and you'll have access to your information. I actually have twit.tv plates. I want to get back. Maybe I'll put those on there. There you go. Yeah. You're going to get one for every car in your house. I am. <laughs> I loved it, especially with this picture. That, that picture's great. Can the front one do that, and the back one have the number? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to drive around with a license plate that does that. Everybody sees you. That is, that is, that is really fantastic. Oh, Memo, I think you've actually hit on something that is kind of wave of the future. I'm very excited about this. Our plate. Uh, what is the site again? Our plate? Our plate dot com. Dot com. Yes. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Find it. Find out more about this coming soon to a state near you. Wow, I think this is really cool. Thank you. It is cool. All yours, Patrick. Yes, I'll shake your hand, Neville. I will Thank shake you. your hand, my friend. Appreciate I will. It. You know yeah. I love headphones and great speakers, which is why we're going to be talking about what happened at Can Jam, some Ooh. of my top picks from the big headphone gathering in a few minutes. But first, Jason Howell has his favorite features on the Android P developer preview. There is a whole lot that we don't know about the next version of Android, Android P. Like whether they're going to call it Android Pop Rocks or maybe Android Peppermint or Android Pecan Pie. But because Google enjoys getting a head start on releasing early builds of its latest mobile OS, we do know about a lot of features that we can all look forward to. I've actually been running the Android P developer preview on my Pixel 2 XL for around a month now. And I have to say for an extremely early build, that's really not intended to be used as a daily driver. This thing is super stable considering. I've had few issues in the past months, which is very nice. I've also had plenty of time to live with some of the big new features. So after a month with Android P, I can share my seven favorite new features that will hopefully make their way to the final build that everyone gets access to later this year. Number one, I really dig the changes to how volume control is handled on Android P. The volume rocker has shifted from controlling the ringer to controlling media volume by default, which may sound strange, but it's actually way more useful considering I always keep my phone on silent anyways. 
Two, related to that, the volume dialogue that appears on screen has been completely overhauled to offer more control at the tap of a finger with a breakout control panel for connected Bluetooth devices. It's also situated right next to the volume rocker, which is a nice bonus. Three, I've always found that selecting text in stock Android can be a, just a little bit of a pain. So it's really nice to see the team working on bringing a zoom functionality into text selection making copy, cut, and paste a bit easier to do anyways. It does feel like maybe this is a work in progress, and I hope to see a bit more refinement to the visual aesthetic by the time this hits prime time. Four, there is now a built-in screenshot editor called Markup that can appear after you take a screenshot on your device, which may sound kind of unimportant at first, but I've actually found myself using it a decent amount of times to share screens on social media, and it's simple, it stays out of the way until you need it, and has just the right amount of tools in there. Five, if you'd like to keep your device locked into portrait mode, you might actually appreciate this new feature that places a temporary rotation lock button down in the nav bar when it senses that you have your phone rotated. You just tap it and your phone will stay in that rotation until you, again, tap out of it. Think of this as your, I'm reading in bed, screen lock function. Six, smart replies in the notification shade. Inbox and Gmail users and Allo, you've probably all seen this integrated. It's Google's AI replies, so you've seen this before, but now they're bringing that to the notification shade, which is going to save you some extra time uh, from jumping you know, from the notification into the app in order to send a quick reply. You don't need to do that anymore. Now you just tap the right reply. Instantly, it's sent. And seven, this last one isn't something I've actually needed to use, but it's a nice security feature called Lockdown that, once activated in settings, will actually appear as an option at the bottom of the power dialog. Tapping that button enters Lockdown mode, which deactivates all other ways of unlocking the device, save for pin and pattern access. There will be a handful of developer preview updates trickling out over the coming months. I'm sure we're going to hear more about this at Google I.O. next month. And as we've seen in the past, that usually means enhancements to these features and even the surfacing of a few new ones that we haven't heard of yet. But if you want to get in on the Android P developer preview right now, you're going to need a Google Pixel device to do it, sorry to say. I'm Jason Howell, and you can catch me talking all about Android P and so many other things on All About Android every Tuesday here on twit.tv. Nice. I'm, I can't wait. What, Android P. We'll find out more at Google I.O., I'm sure. Maybe even uh, get our first Android P. devices sometime soon. Somebody pointed out uh, as the, the feed was zipping by. Um, somebody pointed out they thought it was too expensive. I agree. $700 is expensive. Oh, you're talking about the license thing. Yeah. But yeah. That it's probably something that would be rolled into the cost of the car into the loan or might re, yeah, you know yeah. create a reduction in the cost of your well, insurance. Well, if you're or something a fleet, like I could totally see why you'd want that license. Yeah, if you're fleet. managing a thousand vehicles, that looks nice. You know what I haven't mentioned? Tech thing. T E K T H I N G dot com. That's the, the weekly show I do where we I review products and talk you about and technology. Snubs. It's a great we show. Questions. Thank you. Love that show. Thank you very much. And you could have now a license plate that says tech thing on it. Just what I need. You should have that. See, you enjoy being recognized more than I do, I think. <laughs> I still think, given some of the places I street park, I would come back to a missing license plate yeah. that somebody was fencing on the corner. I had twit.tv on my car for years. Stolen. Nobody, yeah. I love that stolen. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do they do? They steal it. It says stolen, then they throw it in the trash. You're, you know, you're 800. They're not going to return it. Oh, gosh. It says stolen. I better put it back on the car. That's not going to That's not going to happen. Oh so my goodness. I, I am a big advocate of audio. You really taught me that. I feel bad that so many people are listening to squashed MP3s right. on $10 earbuds in their ears. I feel like there's a whole generation that's losing what we well, love about music. One of our contemporaries at a previous employer, I loaned him a set of headphones. They're like, they're no good. Too much bass. These were not headphones that were known for having a lot of bass. I'm like, you've been listening with the. They don't sound like this. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 well, there's so. You can get so much better than the earbuds that come with your phone. You can get so much better than like a $23 set of earbuds. So I get an Emotix. Right. I know you like Grados, mm -hmm. and I have Grados. I like those. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my go to headphones right now, this is a pair of AudioQuest Nighthawks. 
Um, you know, these, are, these you can pick these up for like three or four hundred dollars. It's an expensive headphone, but this is a fantastic neutral and probably the most comfortable headphone I've ever had in my head. You want I do I like how soft they look. So one thing I'm going to say, yeah, you say three hundred, four hundred dollars for headphones. Oh, these are comfy. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. But you, you would spend a lot more for a stereo and this is the beauty mm -hmm. of this. Headphones, you can connect headphones to any good audio source and yes. get great sound for a lot less and a lot less complexity than building a big stereo system. Well, let's have some fun. So I just got back, uh, I was at Can Jam SoCal last weekend down in Los Angeles. Can get Jam, if you've never heard of it, Head-Fi. I love uh, Head-Fi. Head-Fi.org. Yeah. Um, they are an amazing set of forums and reviews, and they do Can Jam gatherings all around the world. For example, uh, in the rest of 2018, there's London, uh, Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in Denver, Shanghai, and then every year they do um, New York City, Singapore, London, uh, and then Southern California. And what's amazing about this is you get to go and most of the major headphone vendors and a lot of headphone vendors and earbud vendors you've never heard of are all there and the you know DAC manufacturers and amplifier manufacturers and you get to listen to all the things. I and love that. Just for fun, I'm going to do to you what I did to a friend of mine who was at his first can jam. Now, now I should say real quickly yeah. before you do anything to me uh, <laughs> that I'm an old man and my you know you lose the high end. I know. But most of the music is actually in the middle anyway. That's what I want to say yeah. is that people will say, oh, well, you, you, Leo, you can't tell good music anymore. It's, I can. You can. And, and you can EQ back the high end that you're losing or whatever part. That we part. can debate, but that's a conversation you could, you could for Turn that part day. up a you little bit. You can turn bit. that part up. I don't know if that's the right thing and to I do. And I think the spatiality of the music, the detail in the instruments, right. you still hear much of that. Yeah. And so it's, I think even when you get older, in fact, maybe especially when you right. get older, good headphones make a difference. Well, I mean, I, I have been in arguments with people who tell me, well, I, I, I don't think that headphone goes up to 19,000. Okay. It's neither does and, your hearing. Yeah, your hearing hasn't gone up to 19,000 K <laughs> since you were somewhere between 8 and 21 years old. Like there there is a curve and you're the high end level of your hearing. But here's the reality. Most of like even when you get to cymbals, I mean we can just talk about harmonics and lots of other things. But the vast majority of that you're done by 10 or 11 K. So even that isn't that high. And even at the low end like a B flat tuba is still, you know, is still around 31, maybe 29 hertz, depending on how big the tuba is. The yeah. lowest string on the bass is around 31 hertz. Yeah. So yeah, you can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. But you're um, not gonna get content. Certain, during certain parts of your life. Right. Well, that's, let's not even get into the whole content so, and high definition. So did you thing. want to experiment on me? Well, I just, just wanted to warn you I'm old. I want to watch, okay, so we're gonna pull up a headphone right here. One of the cool things about Can Jam is you get to hear the stuff you will probably never get to hear. And sort of the flagship audio experience, right, is something called Sennheiser's Orpheus 2, the HE1. That, that's that's like their the moon best shot. in the world. This is probably the best in the world. Okay. And part of it is because there's a whole experience. I don't know if the video comes up, that's not the Sennheiser Orpheus. But uh, we'll talk about the audio movie. That's the Sennheiser Orpheus. So, oh, wait a minute. That's, yeah. a, that's a whole, th what the hell? The lid comes up what the, and the wait tubes The pop tubes out, just rise up and out the of the marble. So this is, a, this is what a $55,000 oh! worth of headphone costs. Okay. Now, I, I will tell you, this is, that is a ridiculous amount of money for headphones. But now, uh, it's not just headphones. Yeah, there's a whole amp receiver th yeah, thing there's, going yeah, on. Yeah, there's like, there's basically eight DACs, eight tubes. <laughs> all of those go into a set of electrostatic headphones. Electrostatics are pretty much the creme de la creme of the audio now, experience. Would I notice the difference? I know too. It's funny you should, funny you should mention that, Leo, because yeah. I can think of at least two people I know. One of whom is an audio reviewer who has literally heard everything on the planet, who traveled out of his own pocket to three different continents to hear the Orpheus you know, he, he was traveling one place and then he made two special trips to hear the Orpheus a second and a third time when they launched. And he was, he, he said it was that good. He started crying in the middle of the demo. Well, and then last weekend, a friend of mine took his That's because he probably got the bill. No, no, he wasn't paying for it. He oh. literally <laughs> flew 3,000 miles to go weep while listening to music on a set of headphones. I, but a friend of mine's- <laughs> This would make me cry too. A friend of mine's partner, I've seen the number of cameras you've owned over the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rounding error for you, young man. But you know, a friend of mine, uh, his partner, his girlfriend was with him at the show last weekend and heard a folk song on this and same reaction. This is not an audiophile person. This is not a yeah. headphone person, but literally it was so accurate. The sense yeah. of the space in the room was so intense. She actually started crying in the middle of the demo. Yeah. So that's kind of like the flagship. And part of that is electrostatics because electrostatics takes such a thin material. They basically use lightning and saran wrap to create one of the most accurate musical, accurate musical presentations you can create. So normally speakers, the whole idea of any speakers, yeah. they move air to yeah. replicate 
the air movement that the right. original instrument created. And right. the more accurate the replication, the more it's going to sound like the original movement. But cheap speakers, they might even be made out of paper. They're yes. just little diaphragms that magnets move. They, some, you get all these fancy materials and Pretty stuff. Pretty much every possible material has been used to make speakers at one Kevlar. point. Kevlar. Or have a Kevlar, uh, beryllium. Diamonds. Pure beryllium. <laughs> Diamonds. I have actually heard a tweeter that claims to be made out of diamonds. Yeah. I think it sounded like crap, but that's it was <laughs> it certainly was a little claiming, harsh. It was a little but strident. Electrostatic is basically uh, a, a, again another a diaphragm, a made charge of some, working in a material. Yeah, but but it but it doesn't have a magnetic driver. It has some other kind of driver. It's I guess. it's well, I mean it's so most of the head, when we think of headphones, right? We usually think of uh, dynamic speakers, right? So right. this is like a speaker, right? Yeah, There's yeah. a cone. You can see the cone inside of there. Yeah. It's protected there it from is. a metal grid. But thank goodness, that looks like a paper cone. Right. To be honest and on me. the back yeah. of this is a series of is a is a circular space with a series of windings on it. The windings are inside of a magnet. When the windings have electricity pass through them, the musical signal, the then this moves. goes out in and out. Yeah, moves the music, some air. Right. Your favorites right now, those planar magnetics from Hi-Fi Man. I like those a lot. They yeah. have a very thin diaphragm trapped in between two. There's basically a magnet here and a magnet here with slots cut into it. And then in between that is a sheet of very, very thin material with traces on it. And they run the, the electrical signal from the headphone amp through the traces, and then it, it works against the magnets and it moves the diaphragm back. Is that a better way out. of doing it than a cone like this? You know, I thought planar magnetics were going to kill uh, dynamic drivers and then I heard the Nighthawk and then I heard the, yeah, the Focus uh, Full Calls Utopia and I realized that there's still a ways to go with you design see, this and is diaphragm quite based an speakers. Arc arcane area and if you're using the white earbuds that came with your iPhone still, this is a whole new area. But I have to say crying is not completely out of the question because Re when you hear great music reproduced mm -hmm. faithfully, it's emotional. Music, that's why we love music. I mean, sometimes it, if it, you hear it's crappy emotional. music that has great emotional meaning to you. I mean, I love Black Flag. These are not audiophile recordings right. by any stretch right. of the imagination. But it still conveys emotion. Yeah. I literally, I mean, I had a, I said headphones, I was using a headphone amplifier from iFi, um, a particularly nice uh, DAC inside of that, and I realized there was a ride symbol going that I'd never heard in like 20 years of listening to this Isn't song. Isn't that cool when you hear instruments? Fascinates me. And, and really good headphones, you do hear more, not only more of the music, but you hear definition yeah. and precision that you don't hear in something cheaper. Yeah. So I'm not going to spend, I would like to, but I'm not going to spend $55,000 well, on let's, the Orpheus. What's next? So, okay, if you want <laughs> to have a that, step down from there? Like stacks are kind of the traditional electrostatic but my favorite yeah. right now are coming from uh, a guy named Dan Clark at Mr. Speakers the Voce what and is he's wrong wait a wait, wait headphone companies hi-fi man Mr. Speakers this who was naming these companies you know when you get to the when you name a show and you're down to whatever you can find that whatever's show left up and the URL hasn't been bought so <laughs> Mr. Speakers. I, so we've we've got a picture of the 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 Voce's which is Mr. Speakers electrostatic I think Ooh, these those are pretty yeah and they're still expensive electrostatics like high-end electrostatics are not cheap these are about three thousand dollar a pair but i think they are every bit as good as that fifty five thousand dollar set of headphones they just don't come with Sennheiser. tubes that rise up out yeah. of marble. you are going to need an amplifier or what they call an exciter to work with them because these are working with very very high voltages compared to regular headphones oh that's interesting you can't just plug it into the headphone jack on your you can your you're just not going to hear much you sound like very quiet. <laughs> yeah so but, you have to have a special headphone amp mm -hmm. okay yeah, I mean, working our way down, and I, I can see people probably freaking out at some of these prices, but uh, Mr. Speaker's Aeon is amazing. Um, it sells for about $800. Oh, that's which a lot less. It is a lot less. Uh, and it, I think it's as good as his high-end Etherflow headphones, except it costs half as much. So really, this would be the right one to get. For this is, yeah, this is this kind know, of the sweet spot. Well, we can keep going down from there. That's, I mean, that's one of my favorites in there. Um, I was fascinated. Uh, Monoprice has been doing headphones. Really? I yeah. mean, I love Monoprice, but that's I go there because well, they're generic cables. Yeah. So is it a good place to get headphones? Well, what's interesting, in the last year they started what they called, well, this is this is like when people say, I have no money or my kid destroys $16. headphones. $16. This is what I say. Get the Monoprice 8323, the yeah. premium hi-fi DJ style over-the-air proof headphones with mic. They're 16 bucks. I think you pay twenty bucks for them if you but buy But they're it on pretty Amazon. good, and the thing is, they're shockingly bucks, good for sixteen bucks, and much better than the ear ear. There are some thirty and hundred dollar headphones that those will quite conveniently spank because money is no guarantee that a headphone doesn't sound horrible. But Monoprice makes an even better one. Yeah, they started out the Monolith lineup a while ago, and the amps, for example, I don't know if we can pull up the page, but they do amplifiers, speakers, headphones. 
Um, the amplifiers in the monolith lineup are actually made by ATI in North Hollywood. ATI has made, basically they're American made amplifiers that they manufacture some of the best companies. There are companies that sell $3,000 amplifiers that are $1,000 ATI amplifiers with a different badge on the front. So and this monolith is a new uh, line Sub -brand, if you for will. mono price that actually is high quality yeah they are they're gunning for high quality they are these are to good looking headphones they got wood on them i, I heard like the that. 1060 if you scroll up a little bit the 1060 c that's a sealed one right there in the yeah. middle yeah. i actually really like the way those sound this is a nice sealed planar magnetic those sell for about 330 dollars they got some new 150 dollar headphones coming out later this year um it was interesting to see monolith there and then they they have bought a couple designs from alex cavalli who was a legendary headphone amp manufacturer but instead of being a three or four or five thousand dollar amp they're starting with a, the spark design which is going to be about 99 dollars so i like the idea and it's something there's all these amazing audio products that's or audio products that sound amazing where the price is coming down right. yeah 800 dollars it's a lot of money but that's probably the equivalent of having twenty thousand dollars worth of audio gear in your that's living what room. i like about that and it's yeah. convenient and you can listen and doesn't bother your neighbors your housemates mm -hmm. you can listen at a high level should people be careful though with headphones because they're right on your ear i worry about hearing loss you of all the people i know are more careful about your ears <laughs> than anybody no i'm serious well I'm, and i admire the, that about you part of the reason i got uh, me and my my friend jeff got called behind one of our favorite bands a jersey band hyperactive uh hi guys um you know the guys from hyperactive like watching. 25 years ago they might be mark okay. used to watch okay. um they they pulled us backstage and they said look we make our girlfriends wear earplugs at the shows and you're at like ten thousand. we were going we would see them like at least once a week you know sometimes twice and they said here's the deal you guys are going to wear earplugs at the shows good or we're going to have the bouncers good for you. them yes that's probably that's why awesome. i still am able to hear yeah, because I, um, I have tinnitus because I loved loud music when mm -hmm. I was a young man. And I, I listened to too many yeah. loud shows without earplugs, and I regret it. The numbers I've read so far say that, like, you know, under the age of 18, the roughly 25% of the pe people under the age of 18 in the United States or in the world right now have permanent hearing loss. Because mostly of those due to crappy playing, earbuds. Well, just for playing them too loud. That's too bad. So, so be careful. Be Actually, yeah. MOT... Uh, um, Edomotic makes kid headphones mm -hmm. that are limited. Puro is the ones you want. P P U R O P U R O P U R O. Puro is a fantastic company. They're actually the, they're they're kind of owned by the same company that does One More. One More is an amazing hundred dollar. One More triple driver is amazing. These are fantastic. Um, Laura Dragon over at the wire cutter did some incredible testing where she looked at almost all. She I probably twenty five different headphones that claim to reduce the audio level for your child. Some of the headphones did not attenuate the volumes whatsoever. What's interesting about the Puros, <laughs> and the, the owner of Puro, the founder of Puro, uh, the founder's daughter had, was basically was listening to her earbuds on her phone and blew out her hearing by the yeah. time she was 16 or 17 you years You can old. hear, if you can, let's put it this way, if the kid's in the car in the back seat listening to music and you can hear it in the front seat. It's too loud. It's too loud. And those headphones, they use a Bluetooth connection, they have a very, very long battery life and they will keep the levels now, to 85 dB or below. You gotta answer this question. Okay. Bluetooth, yes. bad idea. Not as bad as it used to be. Okay. And especially when you start, for example, is this because of Aptex, or are you talking about A2 even by D2? the time you get to like Bluetooth 4.0, it's gotten so much better. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is this this. Crew, so you don't always listen wired. Sometimes you listen wireless. Uh, this is an interesting device. This is a company called Blue Wave. This is called the Get. Uh, BlueWave.ca. They're Canadian. Is the website. And this is actually a you know a Bluetooth 5.0. It also does Aptex and Aptex HD. These are newer Bluetooth, higher quality audio. Yeah, products. and essentially this will turn, if you have a really nice set of headphones, this will turn them into a wireless headphone oh. with a very, very nice microphone built in. And I know it's very, very nice because I was using it and talking to my mother and she didn't say, put the delete expletive headphones down. I feel like Bluetooth compresses a little bit, and so it you're does. losing some of the airiness and the spatial. Yeah, I mean, some Bluetooth compresses. It, back in the, when when Bluetooth started, it was atrocious. Yeah. Um, if you are doing serious listening in a quiet room, you you can probably pick up the difference. Right. By the time you get to like something like Aptex, or if you have a phone that supports an Aptex HD, the difference is much 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 thinner. But if you are listening at home in your super quiet environment with your favorite tax, because you're having a musical experience. Not just listen, you know, background at the office, you're not going to notice. In know, the car, in the yeah. subway, on the bus to work, doesn't yeah. matter. But not when so you, much. But I see, I'm truly lobbying for something that will probably never happen, which is for people to sit down and listen to music. 
And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to say have a great stereo, I sit do at the sweet spot. But, boy, if you've got good headphones, even then, you're going to hear yeah. great music. It's hard to have a shared experience while wearing headphones. Well, that's true. It's nice if you could sit with your kids on the couch and listen to a song that's and me. say, see, isn't this good? Isn't this listen great? Listen to a whole album. Those Dropkick Murphys, son, you're going to, they're awesome. <laughs> Black flag, kids. It's my six-year-old knows all the words to rise above. Well, see, I, I rest my case. <laughs> How about Sony? You, you, I know you mentioned the Sony MDR 7508s. So those have always had a good reputation. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you, if you want to, if 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 the sixteen dollars for those monoprice 8323s, if you think you're ready for the next thing, um, the Sony MDR 7506s. This is probably about as good as it gets for under under 150 bucks. I see a lot of those around. They're very good. You've probably seen people editing in this very building. I think we have, headphones. as a matter of fact. This is, this it's is a we nice headphone. Okay. It's got a nice sound yeah. curve to it. They are. I have a pair of a cousin of these headphones. It's in excess of 25 years old now. You can basically drive tent stakes with these, and then listen. They're just indestructible. I mean, I take it back. I'm on my third set of ear pads, and somebody ripped the cable out once because they were drunk and an idiot, and I soldered it back in. But the headphones are still going. So I bought a pair of headphones because my son, you know, who's 22 now, Henry. Can you believe he's 22? No, 23. But I, you know, Seamus is. <laughs> is I know. Now 10. I know. They're 11. growing up. So I found a pair of headphones um, called German Maestro. German Maestro. They, they said you can drive a truck over them. <laughs> Uh, and they and and it's true. He's you've never heard of these though, huh? No. No. Well, these these headphones. He is he is still using them. Uh, two years later. This is good. They're very solid. And I think they sound quite good. I think the the audio response is. You good. You can tell when a company makes car audio equipment, you should buy their headphones from them. Is that true? No. <laughs> You're making that up. I'm teasing you. You're because making it's that fun. up. The I, the German maestros. They're they're beautiful looking headphones, <laughs> and they even make them with microphones on them. Oh, we forgot probably the most important thing I heard at Can Jam. What? So Indiegogo Project came out. A bunch of people asked me about it from Odyssey, who is a planar magnetic manufacturer, along with Mr. Speakers and, and your crew over at Hi-Fi Hi Man. Man. Yeah. Um, and they came out with a planar magnetic gaming headset called the Mobius. And, this uh, is uh, so you pronounce that Odyssey because I've always said Audis. I said Audis until someone it's Odyssey. Someone pulled me close and said it's Odyssey. Okay. Which you know who knows maybe I'm getting it wrong. No, that no, that sounds right. It me. sounds like exactly something they would do. But they've got something. They're basically <laughs> claiming a similar sound profile to the LCD2, which is a thousand dollar headphone. They these do. guys have a great reputation. Yeah, right? and they're the Kickstarter's going huge because they basically wanted to see if there was a market for this. And they claim this is for gaming though. Yeah. Well, it's got a head tracking device inside of it. So oh. when you plug. Again, the wireless connection is not going to give you the, the full surround sound experience, but if you connect it in via USB, it shows up as a, like a 7.1 sound card. And oh. then the head tracking, you know, if, if the if the Wait a minute, so you is, turn your head, the gun goes to the left ear like that? Yeah. That's not the... I didn't have a full gaming demo, but I did a, That's cool. a, a musical demo where the band was playing up here, and you turned your head to the right, and the band was over here. What are they going to... Uh, this is a Kickstarter, but yes. or Indiegogo, but what are they going to charge? They are currently charging, I want to say, if I think if you buy $299 for a single <gasps> pair, $249 wow. if you buy two, <coughs> uh, and then they will be $399 Critical when they hit. ship. So, so July 2018, I'm actually uh, currently forbidden from buying anything on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. But uh, when still they still waiting out, for my Osic headphones to yep, ship. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but Odyssey has been around for a long time, yes. and I think they're, are, they're they know what Southern they're doing. Southern California Venable yeah. Manufacturing. That's also what's amazing about so many of these headphones and audio companies is that they're actually manufacturing in the United States. I like that. Um, Mr. Like Speakers, that. they make all their stuff down in San Diego. Odyssey is down in L.A. Um, Shit makes almost all of their stuff. What? Who? S-C-H-I-T-T. <laughs> okay, that's a bad name. No, it's Unless a that's the guy's name. name. Is it you know, his they're name? Doing, I'm not going to question name Mr. their marketing Shit? choices. Because that's doing, not good. No, they're doing <laughs> fine. I would change my name. They're full of two for 100 bucks. That and the AudioQuest Dragonfly are kind of like my two favorite. I want to step up from the headphone jack and my headphone. Can that you is imagine amazing every time you meet somebody, you'd have to say, it's spelled with a C. And two Ts. And two Ts. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so the, I, you know what? You? They're a good company. I don't talk. I don't like to talk about them too much because of the name. Because of the name, <laughs> right? Am I wrong? 
of all the things I thought would make you turn pink, that is not what I, headphone amps, <laughs> is not what I thought would do it. Did you see anything? This is, I want to go to Can Jam next You year. should. The, the, is there anything else you saw that we should tell people about? Or? Dozens of things, but yeah. we could go all day. Watch Tech Thing, you're going to do something on Tech Thing? We did about something it? on Tech Thing. We also had a review of, uh, this week, we actually, a, a couple more products we saw at Can Jam, plus a review of Elac's debut 2.0, their next amazing entry-level speaker. Andrew Jones Company. Yes. And, uh, in fact... Well, it's a very old German company, but Andrew, Andrew Jones works now for them. decides yeah. design speakers. And I've them. heard very good things. I was thinking of replacing uh, my Aparians in my man cave... With, with the debut 2.0 because uh, I want the Atmos they have the Atmos up fire I would probably for you I would say do the left center and right do the unify um, they, they the, also the next make step those? up the okay. next step up from the debut and then do all the surround you use the debut th for the surround stuff you're gonna it's like so those. fun talking to Patrick he makes me spend you people say to me you make me spend money you make me spend money is, a lot is, of money am I gonna get a lecture from Lisa on my way no no no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> it is my man cave after all <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, if you want to get fancier with the speakers, we can do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, for a long time, I wanted Bowers and Wilkins speakers. I was dreaming of it. And then I saw the price tag, and I said, I think I'll get something else. You, you think know? those are expensive? I know. There's more, isn't it? You could really go crazy. You can go all the way down this rabbit hole. Oh, I know, and that's where I'm trying not to. Uh, let's do it. You want to do something that we used to do all the time on the new screensavers. It's time for a 3Com Netcam Network call for help Thomas is on the line from Las Vegas Nevada on the three cut <laughs> there's something that never happened on the three com net cam network Thomas has a green screen so we're taking advantage of that right now hi Thomas hi Leo hi Patrick how are you guys good yeah, man this is good you kind of look like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the, in the in the episode four or is oh, it yeah. five ghostly yeah Nine, um, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> 17. <laughs> I never can get 42. that straight. Uh, so, Thomas, welcome. And Thank what you. can we do for you today? Well, um, I have a 2014 iMac, and I have an external hard drive that is almost full, and it's very slow, almost probably because it's full, uh, of family photos and videos and just stuff over the years. Um, looking to replace it. I've been considering... Um, an external RAID storage like OWC, Thunder Bay, maybe Lacey, Lacey, the Big Five, and even Drobo. Uh, mm -hmm. I've also considered solid state drives, really big ones. What's uh, the best connectivity? What kind of connector do you have on your computer? Is it going to be plugged into a computer or? Right, yeah. Thunderbolt 2 Thunderbolt on the iMac. Two. I right. want you to, to do me a favor right now, Thomas. I want you to go to backblaze.com. I want you to okay. sign up for an account, <laughs> and I want you to make sure you go into the software it sets on your machine and start backing up that external drive now. And if not, if you want to wait till you're, if you want to be polite, wait till you're off the, 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 the video <laughs> conference here. I'm okay with that. But as soon as you're done sure. with this, I want you to get that drive. You, you do have a backup. I'm, with I do. I'm I'm using a competitor. Com That's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you got your, Backblaze it's, is it's, a competitor to our sponsored Carbonite. But if he sorry. wants to mention Backblaze, my bad. I'm, yeah. I'm using the other one. <laughs> the third one. Yes. Okay. There's a, a several thousand out there at this point. But so there, I'll tell you what I like okay. uh, a lot, and I've used a lot of their products, and they're fairly low cost. Other World Computing is great. Mm -hmm. I love Other World Computing, but they, they tend to be a little pricey. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan of a company called, I'd never heard of them before, Akitio, A-K-I-T-I-O. Oh, wow. uh, they make Thunderbolt 2, and the reason I found out about them, Thunderbolt 3 enclosures mm -hmm. as well, which are harder than a hen's teeth to find. They're really tough. This is a Thunderbolt 2. It looks cool. It looks a little bit like the cheese grater. So it looks really <laughs> cute next to yeah. your Macintosh, right? And yeah. uh, I wouldn't, you know, you get it get it unpopulated, no drives, $339. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a switch on it that lets you choose what kind of RAID. It's handled in the uh, the connectivity. Nice. Uh, I really That's like these. Hardware, yeah, hardware it's hardware RAID. RAID. On yep. board. Yep, it's okay. on board. Uh, you can, uh, you know, the one I have, you has a switch. You can do it in striped, or you can do it in uh, it's what we call scary raid. Actually, Death that's raid. striped. Or you can do oh, redundant wow. raid if you want. I don't think these do raid five, though. I think you're talking raid zero yeah. or right. raid one. Um, and yeah, then typically raid five is software, so that was part of the question: was yeah. do we trust that? Do we trust the hardware? 
It depends on the hardware and the software. I mean, there, there's there's a, there's like 32 ways to skin this particular cat. One of your questions was about using a large capacity SSD. Um, if you are constantly backing up that SSD to something else, for example, your, your online backup provider, Carbonite, by the way, which is a sponsor of the Twit Network. Um, <laughs> Actually, they're not. They're, the, uh, <laughs> Carbonite, who has in the past. In the past, they have, the and they Network. sponsor the radio show. Um, right in any case, um, you know, SSDs are amazing and they're fast and they're awesome until they die. And then you are what we in the technical industry like to call SOL. Kids, ask your parents. Um, unless your parents hate being asked things like that, in which case don't ask I use them. A, I use a Drobo Mini with four yeah. uh, SSDs in, uh, in what Drobo calls Beyond RAID. I think those that is that's fine, yeah. but you still want backup no matter what, right? Yeah, I mean, I have a yeah. I mean, you probably if, if you watch tech thing, prepare to be put to sleep because I'm going to say three copies on at least two different mediums, at least one offsite, um, because you don't want to lose your data. Um, in the case of this, you know, if you are backing it up to another something somewhere something else, it's okay to use an SSD. Normally, I'd be really uptight about that because SSDs are amazing until they crash. Um, I'm a big fan of Drobo's 5D. They were a sponsor of This Week in Computer Hardware, but I've been using that thing uh, at home and at work for several years now yeah. with absolutely yeah. no problems, and it's pretty fast. Um, I have two Synology NASs, one in my house and one that I use Synology in the is our, generally our yeah. favorite all around, but that's a NAS, so it's additional uh, features. Yeah. It's, not, a, it's not, not a USB or an external drive or a Thunderbolt 2 drive. It's designed to be connected to the network. Yeah, I mean, one of the nice things about the Drobo 5D is it's got USB 3.0, and it's got Thunderbolt uh, uh, I want to say Thunderbolt 2 at this it's point. It's 2, yeah, yeah. They don't have 3. Yeah. You know, that Can way if the Thunderbolt... Thunderbolt 3 down to 2? Well, yeah, I don't... Uh, you don't have Thunderbolt 3 on your Mac, right, you said? No. Uh, you spend... Thunderbolt 3 is... Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 3 is no. so expensive. There are several devices that use Thunderbolt 3. I have a Thunderbolt 3 uh, enclosure. Okay. But uh, it's you pay hundreds of dollars more yeah. for Thunderbolt 3 capability. And I'm not convinced, A, for what you're doing, you need the speed. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you need the speed if you're encoding video directly right. to that external drive, that kind of thing. You're just backing up photos and videos. You're not encoding to it, right? Yeah. Well, this would be the main storage. And I, and I do have the two other sources of backup. So, I mean, so you're going to yeah, have internal storage, which is really your main storage. That's where your operating system and, and apps live. This is your data drive, right? Yeah. Your external drive is your data drive. That doesn't right. need to be as fast. You I'm, want I'm, SSD on your internal drive for sure. Your external drive, can, it could even be spinning drives. It could be USB 3.1. You'll see very quickly the price goes through the roof as yeah. you start loading up SSDs. You start getting Thunderbolt 3 instead of USB 3.1 or, or yeah. Thunderbolt 2. It, <laughs> and then if you move to a hardware that doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 in it, you're going to be like, I should have just bought the Thunderbolt 2 well, slash USB 3.0. There's also, I bought an Akidio Thunderbolt mm -hmm. 3 enclosure. It only works with Windows because there's differences between the implementation. So it, if you're going to get a, a Thunderbolt 3, you got to make sure it works with Mac as well. That's a whole nother. Mm -hmm. Uh, a kettle of fish. Uh, I think Thunderbolt 2 or USB yeah. 3.1 is plenty fast for yeah. I think that. even USB 3 for the vast majority of what you're doing yeah. is more than fast enough. My, my, I use the Drobo, as I said, I'm the Drobo Mini, That's I use it as a USB 3 mm -hmm. uh, external drive. That's my data drive. It works, it's plenty fast enough. It's really the loading of the operating system and the applications mm -hmm. that you want that speed. That's where you want the SSD. So for you said you wanted a four, I, I see in the, in the notes, a four bay RAID 5 enclosure, that's what you're looking for? That's what I'm, that's what I'm considering. That's what I'm leading yeah, towards. Yeah, don't put SSDs in that. That's going to get way <laughs> too expensive real fast. Because oh, yeah. you're going to want two terabyte, you're going to want four two terabyte drives, right? Remember, that's what I was thinking. you're going to lose a third in redundancy. Mm -hmm. So instead right, of getting six. eight, you're getting six. You might want to get the three terabytes. If the three terabytes are 30 <laughs> bucks well. more, you might as well get the three terabytes yeah. instead of two. Get drives designed for these kinds of enclosures. Because it's the yeah. you know, which basically means Western Digitals. Yeah, Reds, Reds. probably. Right. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they're but fast yeah. enough. I don't think you, and especially because when you're using it in RAID, you get the benefit of speed from mm -hmm. the RAID, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm a big, like I said, I've, I've had phenomenal success with the 5D. That's not network attached. Uh, Synology is a go-to. Um, that's for network attached. Synology stuff is really well maintained and it just works. I love the Synology. So. But again, that's a different use case. Yeah. If you're looking right. just for an external drive, yeah, USB 3 mm -hmm. on a Drobo, that's a... Drobo's, but there's plenty of other similar yeah. choices. Or just USB 3 on a faster external hard drive. <laughs> well, that's, very, was, that's why I was considering the yeah. four terabyte solid state. Those are because expensive. Because this is a 7200, yes they are. It's, <laughs> and this is the 7200 RPM two terabyte 
So, and I'm only pulling maybe 20 megabyte per second, mm -hmm. yeah. according to the Black Magic Drive. 20 me me megabyte, you said? 20 megabyte. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> you something, could, something, it's slowing down. You don't need. No. <laughs> you need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> That's I get a little a, slow. I get, 100, I get 100 megabyte to my NAS, which right. is RAID five. You'll get. So. You'll get what 10 gigabytes per second on on USB three. Yeah, it'll be quite that. No, nominal, which means it'll well, be even if it's half that though. It's right. a lot faster than what you're getting now. Yeah. yeah right. I, I think. Yeah, the drive just. Yeah. You know, it, it's a full bucket. It's like, it's just. Ready to be replaced. I don't know if that's because it's full. I think that that might be other issues uh, going on with it. Possibly. Again, I like Akidio. Uh, I, I, I've been very happy with the co low cost, but they're well made. They're solid. Um, this is not a bad choice. I think Drobo, you can't go wrong. They're a little more pricey because they're yeah. doing some specialized software. And they're RAID 5, so they're going to do better. See, there you go. 1.3 gigs a second on that five. one. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think there are a lot of good choices out. I've been very happy with the Kitio, and they look nice yeah. with a Mac, because they just yeah. have that kind of Macish feel to them, and they make them uh, in a variety of different the uh, Macish feel, Macish feel formats. Um, they even have one with a little handle on it, so you just pick it up and carry it around like your lunchbox. Uh, so, so Drobo, and then if you did yeah. want a NAS, Synology. That's my favorite. Aces. Yeah. But you don't connect that direct via USB. You put that on your network. I don't, but some You could, I guess. It has a Depends USB on the port. I'd have to look. Yeah. They, I think you're paying Have more we just overwhelmed you with options and helped you absolutely not at all? Well, we've saved him some money, if that was what he was <laughs> looking at. Well, doing. yeah, I've, I've seen plenty of options, and you guys are helping me narrow it down, and I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm a, Drobo's great. Um, I'm telling you, look at that Kitty-O for the low price. Uh, and the high quality, they're metal, they're nice, they feel good. Um, they're metal. Metal. You are so, becoming a car guy. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like metal bending. That's, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that. Uh, and other world computing is really good. If the price is good, uh, I think other world computing is excellent. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan. And their tech support's pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Which is that, part of why that's what I've heard. More for their and the warranty, if you buy it with the drives populated, is better than if you buy it empty. So it kind of seems like it would be a little less of a headache. Yeah, you have to price that out and see. You know, are they giving a good good deal on the drive? So they're like the uh, Elite Pro Dual, which is two drives. See, uh, for, for the capacity the you're looking at, four rate I was looking. That's at. That's what you're looking at. Performance rate enclosure. Yeah, that looks a lot like the Akidio. In fact, it might be a relabeled dun 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 version <laughs> of the Akidio. That's interesting. Imagine that. Yeah. Other world's good though. I, yeah, I love their warranty. I love their service and support. So we can't go they can't go nice wrong work. there either. Okay. Hey, it's nice to, to, nice to meet you. Thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Hey, it was it. great meeting you guys. I appreciate you taking my call and appreciate your time. If you had it's called on the original screensavers, we would have been recommending a 500-megabyte uh, drive <laughs> enclosure that took four drives to, <laughs> and, and ran around 20 megabytes a second. So times have changed. You'll yeah. be able to back up your files <laughs> in several days with this incredibly fast new external enclosure. We should go back and look and see. Using USB 1.0 <laughs> or eSATA technology. eSATA. Was eSATA around? Uh, no. eSATA no. came later. But I hated it just as much later as I did <laughs> now. Thank you, Thomas. Take care. Thank you. Next right. week, I'll be gone. We're going. I'm going to Japan on Thursday. Ooh. Going to be gone for a couple of weeks, but Megan and Jason will be hosting the show, and here's how you can ask them your questions. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. I think you're going to be back in a couple of weeks while I'm gone and doing the show with, uh, is he doing it with Rich tomorrow? No? Padre. 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 Oh, that is going to be a geek fest. No, On no. May 5th, Patrick Norton and Robert Balasser. I can't wait. It's the hipster show. Oh, my God. That's, I, <laughs> we have I, fun. I might come back early just to, just to sit in the audience and watch. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do the mailbag in just a second. But first, here's Megan Maroney with a look at some great USB headphones. Podcasters, watch. <laughs> As Mark Twain once said, nothing is worse than bad sound on a podcast. You might be able to get away with bad video quality every now and then, but bad sound is unforgivable. Leo loves his Shure mics that work well with iPads, and Jason Snell from Six Colors is a fan of the Yeti, 
but I wanted to try a mic company that I hadn't heard others talking about. So I reached out to the folks at Samson and they sent me three review units of different portable mics. I'll be using each of the mics they sent me to tell you about that microphone. And that's why we shall call this the Microphone Inception. First, these mics are not necessarily the best choice for audio geeks. They're for people like me who want an easy setup so they can spend more time doing what they do best talking about stuff. First, we did no post-processing on any of this audio, so what you hear is what you get. The G-Track Pro is the latest USB mic from Samson, designed for podcasters, streamers, and musicians. I wouldn't exactly call it portable, as it weighs 3.52 pounds, but if you're used to carrying equipment, it's not a big deal at all. Also, the weight is part of what keeps the mic sturdy so it doesn't move around on the desk when you're talking. The G-Track Pro has unidirectional, bi-directional, and omnidirectional pickup patterns, so if you podcast or stream with a group, you don't necessarily need a mic for every host. At $150, this mic isn't a huge investment. It's easy to set up, it looks pretty nice, and the controls are easy to use. Also, as you can probably hear, the sound is not bad. It also comes with a desktop stand that's already installed, unlike its predecessor, the G-Track, which now costs only $89 on Amazon. The G-Track Pro also comes with a microphone mount. Next, the Meteor mic. This little beauty is smaller and cuter than the G-Track Pro. It folds up to look great on your desktop and it's ultra portable. You can plug the USB directly into your iPad with a USB dongle. The Meteor mic is only $70, but you get what you pay for. It's limited to cardioid pickup pattern. So if you're planning on using one mic to produce a podcast with more than one host, this is probably not the mic for you. Also, the mic works great on a desk, but if you're planning on using it on a stand, the legs will get in the way. The Go mic is small, so it might work better if you stand while you podcast. Also, there's only one control, so there's not a lot of features that you can mess with, which can be good if you like simplicity, but not so good if you want to dig into the audio more. If you want to go solo, you can with the Go Mic Mobile that comes with a microphone and a receiver. So if you go to an event, you can interview people who are there and, uh, and just use your iPhone for video. What's your job here at Twit? I do security interception. Who's the most valuable person that you're protecting here? Say me. Everyone. <laughs> Good answer. Let's visit Hase at her desk. Who's your favorite person here at Twit? Say me. Megan. Thank you. One of the great things about the Go Mic Mobile from Samson is that it's wireless, so you can shoot yourself with your iPhone, or you can have someone else shoot you too. It's around two hundred dollars, which is great for a totally wireless system. It's great for journalism on the scene. It's great for podcasting on the scene, videography, uh, whatever you want to do. You have a totally wireless system built in with pretty good sound, I think. It comes with all the dongles you need, all the attachments. So if you use an iPhone or if you use a phone with a USB-C or a USB, regular USB 2.0, you've got it all there in the box. What do you think? What portable podcast mics do you use? Record a little audio file or a video file with those mics and send it to me at Megan at twit.tv. We got an email from uh, Dave in Danville, Illinois. I, co I collect and save lots of MP3s and MPEG videos. 30 gig my 30 drive. gig hard drive is open. <laughs> well, I'd like to know what my options are on hard drives above 80, above 80 gigs. Wow, that's out of control. Well, uh, nobody has anything above <laughs> 80. 80 is the top right now. Is the top for IDE. IBM maxes out at 75. Seagate at 40. Mac Store at 80. Okay, SCSI so or IDE. Yeah. So really, what you're going to have to do is you're. Uh, ultimately, there will be larger than 80. I mean, yeah. that's inevitable. In fact, no, it'll, it'll never happen. Been around a long time. Ten years ago, if you had asked me uh, what is hard drive technology going to be like in the year 2001, I'd say forget hard drives. Moving parts are dead. It's going to be solid state memory. You're going right. to have gigabytes in a, you know, a chunk of memory. But that didn't happen because it turned out hard drive technology had a lot more life than anybody. Are you laughing at my hair? No, I love your hair. You have hair. I laughed at no one. Bigger, you bigger, do too there. Drive. I'm laughing because so you were like, you know, right now, fact, someday, solid state. Hardware is dead. It's all solid state. You were only off. We all thought that. It just took about 10 years long. Oh my goodness. So the biggest one at that time was 70, was 80 gigs? 80 gigs from Max. And what's the biggest uh, now? It's uh, 8 terabytes, 12? 12 or 16, depending on whether you're... And, and someday, we'll have a clip of this show and that show, and then we'll be watching and say, Ha ha! Now we've got petabytes! Who'd have thunk it?
Except it'll be more like, now we've got petted by Patrick. Who the f- There's a couple of Put your teeth back in. Okay, you can take that weirdo. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Stacking hard drives. I Taking <laughs> weird looking. Hey, this is not the cheese demo. getting 120 or 160 out of it. We'll never forget the cheese demo. It was my favorite demo ever. You slept through it. I was exhausted. <laughs> but it was a magnificent representation of an incredibly complex subject using slight cheese. I was trying to explain, <laughs> this is on Call for Help, how sampling worked. Yeah. And we sliced cheese, and then the number of cheese slices per second yeah. was, the, was the sample So he rate. cut a, <laughs> a, like a musical, he cut a wave into the cheese in music form. But the funniest thing is, we had, I don't know if you remember her name, we had a very odd intern. Yeah, I know, I, there's no button there. You can see me. Classic. We had a very odd intern at the time, and... Um, I'll never forget, we sent her to uh, the grocery store to get cheese you could write on with a marker. <laughs> and she actually went to the grocery store and asked them for cheese you could write on with a magic marker. Anyway, those were the days. The reason we laugh at that this is because during the cheese demo, which did not go well, and I'm breaking out into a flop sweat, and I'm, it's like, uh, and then you slice the cheese. I look up. And there in the back of the studio is Norton. <laughs> that was that was when the that was when Fresh Gear was shooting at six a.m. You were tired. You had to stay and I was, there. I had been in the savers. I had been in that building for I think thirty one hours at that point. I think at the time I told the director, "Can you get a shot of Norton sleeping oh, over yeah. there?" Which, and you woke up and beat the sh the what is it S C H I T T. No, actually, I was mortified that I was sleeping in the studio. No, that's and good. And was very apologetic. It's I good. believe on camera at that point. Which I was really, embarrassed. If you can wake up My live national demo. television <laughs> during someone else's segment. Time for... It was Speaking barely national. Pink. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Time for... Watched in several different municipalities. Several different small cities. Time for the mailbag. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is the mailbag. Don't know why we call it that, but there it is. Mailbox, mailbag. Mailbox. You pick a. There you go. Sumi Das. Remember Sumi Das? I do. Email one. From uh, Brent says hi, Leo and Patrick. I recently purchased. Oh, this is all for you. A vinyl <laughs> turntable for my family's hobby room. I think the turntable's not made of vinyl. It's for playing vinyl. I would assume. Would be my guess. Yeah. I feel comfortable with that <laughs> assumption. It has a preamp built in, and it's wired to two, count them, two, two speakers. How can I enjoy records in the rest of the house? I know about speaker products like Sonos, but I'm assuming that analog audio will need to be converted to digital. Does that defeat the purpose of buying an analog player? Yes. <laughs> I, okay, I, I should point out, I'm not... Uh, I, I've recently been experimenting with vinyl because a friend of mine was like, I can't believe you don't listen to a lot of vinyl. What you need is tubes. If you had a tube with a cone over this, over this would be analog, over the turntable, and then you ran it to another... Piping the music. Piping the, the music to another conical thing that would come out of... That'd work. It would work. It's analog. It would sound very tinny. Um, so my first thought is, is you went to the effort to buy a turntable, yes. and you got stereo speakers, yes. and you're in your rumpus room, your hobby room, you got the family space there. Keep the vinyl in the family space, because I'll be honest with you, even my friends who have thousands of vinyl albums, and you know, they're like, you know, I, I, I use Spotify when I'm in the rest of the house, yeah. because there's nothing more irritating than being like, in, you know, you're in the bedroom, you're in some other room, right? Because you could go. And the record's going Ching. And you're thinking, oh yeah, I paid thirty-five dollars for that. I gotta go all the way down the hall yeah. to turn it over. Should you want to, you got a bunch of different options, right? Uh, the there are various Sonos devices. You know, the the Sonos uh, Connects and the Sonos Play Fives all have analog inputs on there. Um, the two different Connect models, you can run the analog output into the analog input on the back now, of that, and I, I believe pipe that through the house. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, but in the, uh, kidding, in the right? <laughs> many years ago, in the days of stereo systems, mm -hmm. it wasn't at all uncommon to have an amplifier or receiver with zones. Most AVRs today still have multi-zone audio options. You could do that. You could. You so could, that's analog, analog. You yeah. plug it into that, and you say, 
This is the B zone, and you'll have yeah. to have wires going from the amp to speakers somewhere else in the house. I say, if you're going to go to the effort to walk into that room, lift the cover up, <laughs> clean the album, don't put the album on, don't forget to get a disc washer. Weight. I found this formula for uh, the disc washer three solution. But the four plus solution is still a mystery. Still a mystery. Mostly water. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and you know, put the needle on the record. You've got like 15, 20 minutes before you're gonna have to be back in that room. S use the vinyl as an event where you sit down and you listen to the side it's, and you have an experience. That's to me, that's the whole thing. That's, that's what, what I'm pushing. The, for the, rest the idea of, the of house. sitting and listening to music. Not music as wallpaper. Yes. But the act of listening to music and for that, you want a nice couch, some speakers left and right, mm -hmm. and stereo. stereo, and you look, and then at 30 minutes, because that's all you can put on a vinyl record, you get up. It's good for your exercise, good for your heart. You can, several feet of walking. Turn it over, <laughs> put the needle down on lift, it, lift and the needle sit off back first. down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to lift the needle off. Yeah. Um, but, I, should I get a vinyl? Uh, no. We'll have that for another. <laughs> this this can be a once once I finally get. I'm actually in the process of finally making PatrickNorton.com live. Oh, Don't good. Go there, there's nothing. He's there been yet. making a blog for as long as I've known him <laughs> for like 30 years now, and uh, well, 20 years. 20. Now, as yes. long as I've but but I actually have a series of articles about what it took me to play a delete expletive vinyl record that I desperately yeah. wanted to play. It's You'll lot, enjoy it's it. You'll laugh your. I ass do have off. a JBL a stereo system with a, a phono input. So I was thinking, I could buy a record, and you can get record. Did you know they sold 14 million vinyl albums last year? Mm -hmm. 14 million vinyl, vinyl albums last year. Do you know that there are some albums that are actually made from analog masters, and some vinyl albums that are actually the same audio as the CD? <laughs> that's a ridiculous thing. There's a, there's a, that's but a, is it 180 gram vinyl? That's all I care about. Don't get me started. <laughs> hey, I got another question for you before you get to that. Okay. You said earlier something that's been bugging me. Uh-oh. So I said because finally. I... I just sit finally bugged Leo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First time ever. Uh, <laughs> you said, because I said I'm old and so I have a curve. You know, I go to the audiologist. Yeah. He says, well, here's the curve. And your audio, you know, your, your yeah. hearing at, the, at uh, 12 kilohertz or whatever is dropping off. Right. And it's a, there's a little notch there. And you said, I said, well, I, but I could just equalize it. I could turn up the audio at that frequency to get it, it up there. Makes me nervous. Why is that not a good idea? I don't know. I, okay, I am not an expert. I have not talked to an audiologist about this. Um, from, a, from a purely sort of metaphysical standpoint, I get nervous about people modifying things. The so equalization they, curve. The equalization curve. Uh, basically modifying the EQ to suit them. Yeah because I'm a purist and it's a pain in the ass. But I also, I'm also super uptight that if you are raising the levels so that your damaged hearing can hear those levels, are you inducing additional damage to oh, your that's hearing? that's a good point. By, you know, if, if you've got a notch in like between 10 and 12,000 hertz, I don't know if you turn up between 10 and yeah, 12,000 hertz. Yeah, maybe not a good idea. Is that going to accelerate yeah. the loss of your hearing? I should probably talk to an audiologist about this, but the, that's, well, a, that's a big thing that's coming out. Is the Samsung phones do this. They have that adapt sound feature. You do an, an audio mm -hmm. test, kind of like you would do with the audiologist, and then they equalize the sound. Mm -hmm. But I think that's more because then you can hear phone calls better. Uh, music does sound a little bit richer. Mm -hmm. But I agree with your initial point, which is even though I've lost a little bit in, mm -hmm. in certain areas, I still hear stuff. And I can tell when I'm hearing all the instruments. I yeah. can tell when I'm getting I mean, the, the sound stage is a full sound stage. I can hear that. I, I also, I mean, one of the things I, I thought about the first time I went to a can jam is I was listening to a very nice set of headphones. And then there was some sort of motion over there. And then I was listening to somebody else's music over the top of my headphones. And then I realized the motion over there was about 12 feet over there. And, you know, I pulled my headphones off and I kind of looked over. And the volume was, this guy was listening to, at a, such an intense volume. On headphones? On headphones. Now, they were open-backed headphones, but it was, it was, it was. That's scary. It was irritatingly loud at 12 feet away, which means right. inside of his of his skull, it must have been incredibly loud. His brain loud. was actually vibrating. His, yeah, his eardrums yeah. were trying to meet in the center <laughs> of his skull. Yeah. And one of the arguments I have with somebody is like, those headphones are no good. You know, they have no high end. And it's like, actually, you're Your hearing, hearing shot. Your hearing has no high end, yeah. yeah. You know, so that it's, you know, it's... it's 
I was, you know, the guy, Mr. Speaker's Dan Clark, um, who makes the the era, the, the so many headphones. Those are the ones I should get. The Mr. Yeah. Speaker's, the three or four hundred dollar model. The Aeon. It's about eight hundred dollars. Those are amazing. But you could trust me. How many cameras did you buy last Never year? Never mind. Don't bring. Sell that a couple up. of the depressing. cameras you don't use. Buy the headphones. You'll <laughs> thank depressing. me later. But he pointed out that you he he looked at uh, me and uh, uh, my friend Michael O'Neill, who used to chase hyperactive with me. He does beginnerAudiophile.com um, and uh, a really nice podcast for people. I should who are listen because I'm a you beginner should audiophile. But he pointed out that. He could change kind of the resonant free. I want to say the resonant frequency of the headphone was going to change based on the different shape and, and sizes cup. of the pin eye. Uh, pin eye, pin eye. I'm bad with wow with biology. So the phone pin would eye. adjust to what it would not adjust. It's just your. It, it is going to change right. the shape and size. Just like of a your room ear. changes the sound in the speakers, right? Yeah. So so and people hear different things. They right. like different things. They've right. done different kinds of damage to I'm their hearing. I'm very happy with the magnetic planars I got from Hi-Fi, the, man. I really noticed. I could tell. Yeah. They sounded different. They're a huge step up from a lot of the headphones. They also cost a lot more, yeah, which is interesting to see. What, what some of the headphone manufacturers are doing and bringing those prices down. You have a question there. You're I have sitting a question on here. it, but it's still alive. John writes, the other day <laughs> I encountered... Which is not what would happen if you sat on me. I'm just saying. It depends on how I sat on it. <laughs> the other day I encountered a boot problem where it was stuck in a loop. I called Dell Technical Sport, still under warranty. After an hour and a half, the tech could not fix the problem, and I have to send my tower back to them. Uh -oh. One of the things they had me do was reset to factory settings. Yep. Does that mean I lost my irreplaceable yep. data? And if so, is there a way to retrieve <laughs> nope. my data? Well, okay, so <laughs> inside of Windows 10, right, when you go to reset your machine, there is a very clear moment. There's two settings. One, keep your files. Two, lose your files. Yeah, it basically comes, and, and when you keep your files, you lose all of your installed applications and-, and But your data is But intact. your data is intact. It, 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 you know, it keeps your data. Um, you know, I was saying this earlier, you should be backing up now, use an automated backup service. It's like five bucks a month, because then if everything goes to stuff, um, or shit, as the case may be. S C A S C. It's with a C. Did I tell you? With two T's. Two T's. And a C. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the. Uh, so I there. Uh, but but uh, but yeah, you. It, they sh the one thing I would say is the right. Dell guy should have said, when you do this, yeah. make sure your data is backed up first. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One, make sure your data is backed up. Um, two make sure you're backing up before you have a problem or before your laptop gets yeah, stolen or the before time. there's a fire in Sonoma County or before there's a flood. So is there any way to say, to go back and find? I would call the tech guy like right now because the first thing I would want to know is am I going to get my computer back or does it go into a refurbishment rack right. and you grab something else and send that something else to well, me? Well, that often operating. is the case when you send something in. You don't get the hard drive you sent in back. Yeah, so that, that would be my always, first question. Always back up and wipe before you. Yeah. Set up the uh, and even if you can, send. yeah. I mean, either you'll pull the hard drive and send send the rest yeah. of the machine back to them, or buy a new hard. You know, buy a hard drive. Do a a per a painful, suffering bit by bit copy of that drive it's to attempt to recover. It's conceivable. It. Depends again on right. which recovery solution you chose, but it's conceivable that even though data was erased, mm -hmm. it's still on the drive, as long as something didn't overwrite it. Yeah. And this is the problem. When you reinstall an operating system, there's probably a pretty good chance it's going to overwrite whatever s space that data was sitting well, on. But if it didn't, you might be able to use, rec I'll give you a, a couple of programs, Recuva mm -hmm. from Piriform, R-E-C-U-V-A. Uh, that's a good choice. Yeah. I mean, booting, if, if nothing else, booting to, you know, creating a recovery drive, a USB thumb drive that'll boot into like a live Linux that does and not write to the hard drive and then, and then you can access and mount program. the hard drive yeah. or just mount the hard drive and try to pull the, your files off of it before you attempt to rewrite that drive. Or, yeah. or, or That's the risk. That Anything you write on that drive could overwrite that old data. Mm -hmm. In fact, probably already has. Sorry. Sorry for the bad news. Thank you so much for being here. You're going to be back May 5th. Cinco de Mayo with Father Robert Ballas here. I understand he's big on the tequila on those days. <laughs> could, could well be. Could, it's not illegal. Priests can drink. Uh, and we should catch you every week on TechThing, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G. Please do. Dot com. And if you're interested in uh, audio and home theater, please check out avxcel.com, which is a podcast I host with Mr. Robert Harris. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad. Nice. I'm glad you guys are still working together. And of course, Patrick appears on Twit every week with Ryan Shrout on This Week in Computer Hardware or Twitch. We may get 
technical and geeky on that show. On That's occasion. a great show. I bet you've Thank had you. a lot of fun talking about always Intel and Ryzen and the lack of NVIDIA GPUs because of Bitcoin mining. The prices are dropping. Are they? They're coming yeah. back down. Uh, you know, a, 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 a sort of. I've been trying to find a compact 1060 for a, a, a mini build I'm doing, a mini ITX build, and you know, it, the the price of that 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 1060 that short 250 millimeter 1060 has dropped from unavailable to eight hundred dollars to around five hundred dollars and then it's closing in on three hundred and fifty dollars it should be about 250 give or take maybe 200 but 350 is a huge drop down from yeah. 800 yeah so yeah. thank you everybody for being here we do the new screensavers on saturday afternoons 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern time that's uh, 2200 utc for those of you living in utc uh, you can watch live Beautiful at twit.tv slash live. It's, a, it's the climate in UTC is phenomenal. It's like everywhere. <laughs> uh, you can also be in our studio, just like this great studio. We had the best studio audience today. I, I, I am so sorry about all the profanity. Uh, if you want to be in the audience, please email tickets at twit.tv. We'd be glad to set you up. You guys are great. You can also, And who's that guy on the left there, though, with the shorts? Does he work here? He what does. the hell is that? No, that's Jerry Wagley, our esteemed producer. And apparently his Casual story is Saturday. he's dressed for a party he's going yes. to later. A that's fundraiser. A fundraiser. For the kids. Oh, it's for the he's dressed like that for the kids. Jeez. I have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you can't watch live, you can always come and join us uh, on uh, on demand at twit.tv slash NSS. Download any episode. Uh, or best, I like this, subscribe in Overcast or Pocket Casts or Apple's iTunes Podcasts or Google Podcasts. That way you'll get every episode automatically. The minute it's available. Audio and video. And I do think the video, I'm a little, you know, biased, but the video is more colorful than the audio, I think. It is. Although the audio is full spec. You know, there's actually no video with the audio. There's no video with the audio. Yeah. But there's no audio with the video. No, so no, no, no. If you get both... <laughs> Thing. No, you know what? The video now includes the audio. Yes. Yeah, we decided. We, you should get both, right? I can't Thanks. imagine how glorious that meeting was. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Uh, now with audio on the new screen savers. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Yes, Ellie was fabulous. Fabulous.